Welcome to another episode of WLS Tutorials. Now, in this one, as promised in the last tutorial, I'm just going to quickly show you how to trigger drum kits. Uh, now, this session was played by uh, Jason Green from Echoes of an Age. Check them out. Uh, pretty decent. I think they have some stuff on iTunes, but I, I don't know where that is. So, I think that's him there. That's him. I uh, can't show a bigger picture because for some reason it's blurry. Um, but yeah, let's get right to it. Now, triggering is a technique used by everyone in the business. You know, um, I don't know, Paramore do it, for example. You know, anyone whereby it's a, play, it's a drum kit play it live. But for some reason, it sounds too clean. <laughs> it sounds too pristine. Um, So basically, basically, let's just get started to, uh, right with it. So this is how it sounds right now. Solo the kit. So that's how the kit sounds on its own. Now you can you can tell that it's been recorded. Uh, uh it's been multi-track recorded, recorded all at the same time. Uh, but what we're gonna do is basically it's gonna isolate these two tracks. Now you can see I've already got an expander and a noise gate. Now an ex sorry an expander works. Uh almost in the in the opposite way i think you could say than a noise uh, than a compressor but um basically what we're using it for is to get more of the bass drum and to to cut out a lot as much bleed over as possible now you could say that you can just use a noise gate to do what i'm doing um but the reason why i haven't really gone for that way is uh is for the for the purpose of this tutorial you know i've worked for this jason is a really good drummer, so everything that he plays is more or less at the same level, unless unless obviously he's not, he doesn't mean for it to be. Uh, however, well, if you're not working with an experienced drummer and then you're having a lot of notes that aren't all to the same, to the same uh, velocity, for instance, more or less. Now you know you could just go just you know analyze the whole track, including the bleed over, but then it sort of just makes your life hard because then you have to go through removing all of the notes that aren't actually the drum kit. Now basically, you know, in conjunction, when these two are used together, you basically hear a sound with more or less no bleed over. So let's remove the snare and then switch them off and if you can see if you can hear it, hear any bleed over. I think it's more noticeable in the snare drum. So that's with the effects on. And that's with the effects off. Okay, so you know that's that should be okay. So we'll switch these back on. What we're gonna do now for the first step is to bounce these in place. Now, what this I oh, just do that by pressing Control B. Now, what this does is it basically analyzes uh, this whole track and then uh, gives you it ba bounces this track. Sorry. And then it gives you all of the effects that have been put on this track. Now, uh, for what we're needing to do, as in the triggering, if this was, if we basically use it in this top track, it wouldn't uh, bypass the expander and the noise gate completely. Now, basically, this bounce in place file is this kick file at the uh, number one with the expander and noise gate applied. So we just do that for the snare as well. So that's control B. Let me just let it run. So you can see that that should be more or less just a snare on its own. Now let's move this up here so we don't get confused with what we're doing. Now we're more or less done because then what we do after this is just press Control D and then it analyzes uh, the whole the whole uh, audio file and then what we should get at the end is just uh, a midi track with the 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 bass drum played to the velocity the same velocities played in the audio file itself now this basically means that it's as realistic as possible um so hey if you're this threshold if you basically see a lot of uh lines that haven't been pressed then you may want to uh, adjust the uh, the threshold, sorry. Um, here you just click kick, and this basically tells Logic to open up a bass drum sample. I actually think I did it for the snare. I did do it for the snare, did I? Well, basically you just click snare, 
Um, I did do this in a dummy. Sorry about that. So you know, you just mess about with Zadu until you're happy. What? What you did? I didn't do it for this. I did it for the. Ah, well, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Technology is trying to make me look bad in front of the public. Actually, I see what happened. I actually did it for the wrong track. I did it for the wrong track. I wanted to do it for this bass drum track. Uh, excuse that blunder. That's just rather embarrassing. So you just let it run. I mean, I've got no excuses. I've been not for more or less two hours now. I can't still be saying I'm tired. So yeah. Okay. We're pretty sure this is the bass drum. Yeah, the kick drum, rather. Uh, so there you can see, yep, it's more or less done. So then you just click OK. And then now you, you can listen to the difference for yourself. I mean, you just press play this. Ba bang. And you play this. I mean, I, I, can, I can't hear it because I'm recording. I don't have any uh, feedback. But I can tell from the 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 velocity thing on the screen recorder that the sound is just a lot a lot thicker a lot better so basically this is just a way to master your drum kit now you can do it for the toms etc etc depending on how you mic your drum kit during the multi-track recording now obviously if you didn't multi-track it i, I don't know why you, you how you could <laughs> go about not multi-tracking this uh, drum kit but um yeah if you didn't then you wouldn't have to do the whole uh expander and noise gate thing because you wouldn't have any bleed over but um yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure that this tutorial is finished, you know. Thanks for listening, and, you know, thanks for listening through my waffles. But as for this tutorial, uh, thanks very much for watching.